get in on them and do a little bit too much damage because they do have fantastic AoE with the Sona ultimate, with the Gangplank ultimate, and the Car uh, Karthus ultimate. Um, they aren't going to try to push down a tower. They are trying to get a fight, but the fact of the matter is they don't have any vision right now. They, you know, I if they want to get a fight around Baron, they really should be a little more defensive. Uh, have Alistar go back and get some wards because uh, the enemy could get a beneficial engage and they wouldn't know about it. Actually, I believe Fnatic went down for the dragon. Um, you know, they're probably all grouped around mid. They actually didn't go for the dragon. Uh, you know, which is... If you can get it quickly, then it's good. But you definitely don't want to leave the barren area alone. They do see the ward there and they don't have any vision. They're trying to bait in a fight without vision, which is definitely not what you want to be doing. Uh, because this game is probably going to stall for a second, I will go over some items some more. You see, I really it does have the frozen mallet. So once she gets her, uh, some magic resist, that should be de definitely be the next number one next item she gets. Magic resist. She should get a quicksilver sash actually, so that she can avoid the stuns from a mumu, and uh, so that Mordekaiser can't get I really as ghost when she dives in the enemy team. But the point of that frozen mallet is so that she can stay on the Caitlyn. They are going very aggressively for this Baron. They know that they have it warded. And Caitlyn's in terrible position. They could potentially get an engage. They throw down the ultimate. Alistar is taking a lot of damage. She hasn't used this ultimate yet. There goes the ultimate. Amumu ulting on top of Karthus. But Mordekaiser and Alistar go down very quickly. They do get the kill onto Karthus and Sona, hopefully. They actually don't kill anyone. Did Sona did go down. But that was a 4 for 1. It's going to be a 5 for 1 if they chase down Amumu. And there it is, I really picking up the kill. So five for one, and they're going to get Baron. And really the entire result of that is uh, they had no wards. So uh, they're actually not going for Baron. I'm a little surprised by that. They did have Karthus still. Karthus does a lot of damage to Baron. They have, between the three of them, they could have tanked for Karthus and killed Baron very quickly. I'm very surprised they didn't do Baron. That is a huge mistake on Fnatic's part. Um, you know, they really could have pressured to end the game with the Baron buff, so very fortunate for Phaeton. But really the whole situation came about because they had no wards. And where are your wards now? They still don't have any wards. Uh, Amumu and Alistar should have sold their uh, Philosopher's Stone since they don't have enough space. But they need wards. They did such a fantastic job of getting map control and having vision this entire game. And you know, no wards just cost them that team fight. The enemy team has a ton of damage output. They have the great single target of Car uh, Kog'Maw, and they have the great AoE of Karthus, Gangplank, and Sona, uh, with the, you know, kind of assassin assassination ability of Irelia. And, you know, they just allowed them to get a perfect engage. But I, I really just don't understand why Fnatic didn't go after Baron. They had three of their champions at more than half health, and they have Karthus. Karthus, if someone's tanking it for Karthus, then Karthus is the fastest champion in the game at taking Baron. And once again, they're going after Baron, and Alistar isn't even with them. They see that Kog'Maw is bottom, but they don't have any vision again. Gangplank throws down the ultimate. I really is coming in. I really is going to get an engage onto Kaelin. Kaelin just explodes, going down very quickly. They're going to try and get this uh, Baron, but Vladimir is going to go down. The ultimate does pick up uh, from Amu, does pick up... Uh, Gangplank and Karthus, so they are actually able to pick up Baron, and then they are able to pick up Irelia. So, a, you know, great fight for Phaeton uh, Gaming, but it, it all started off so terribly and so wrong. I don't understand, when you're ahead in the game, why they are taking such huge risks. You saw Caitlyn died instantly, and it, in my mind, they were going to lose that fight 100%. They did do a good job uh, of bursting the enemies down. Uh, you know, they do have lots of damage and are still definitely out farming the enemy. But I, I, why are you taking these risks? All you need to do is get some good ward coverage, and then you know when the enemy's coming in, and Caitlyn can defend herself. You guys can get better engages on the enemies. And really, they're just letting Fnatic back into this game. Uh, you know, if, if, and they were able to pick up Baron and that, you know, fight definitely went their way, but they could have just had another ace for Fnatic, and I guarantee that Fnatic would have taken Baron that time. I, I would hope they would not make the same mistake twice. You know, they could have just lost the game, and 
you know, when you're behind, you can take those uh, risks, but Kog'Ma is going to go down here, see if they can chase down Sona, they will not be able to get Sona. Uh, Kog'Ma out of position, definitely. Uh, when you're behind, you can take those kind of risks and be very aggressive for Baron. And I like the aggression for going for Baron, but you really need to have that ward coverage, and when you're ahead, while you want to push your advantage, you don't want to give your opponents these great opportunities co to come back into this game. They do have Baron though, they are pushing bot, Kog'Ma is down, they are likely going to get this tower. Uh, you see Amumu is a little bit low, but uh, Alistar will tank this very easily, he's got plenty of... Uh, he doesn't have any armor yet, but I'm, I'm a little surprised he didn't take more damage. But he, they are able to tank this, uh, the great range damage from Caitlyn drops the tower very quickly. They should come up and just start poking at this tower, and then Caitlyn's exhaust is up, you will see. So, if Irelia and Karthus try and engage on Caitlyn, which they would if they poke down the tower, then the exhaust comes off, uh, Alistar pulverizes, Mordekaiser throws off all his damage, gets another ghost, and, you know, very quickly that would be a one fight. They are transferring to mid, the secondary turrets are definitely easier to get than the base turrets, so, uh, knowing that Kog'Ma was respawning, it is a little bit safer for them to take these. They don't want to take the po uh, poke from Kog'Ma. Karthus throwing down the wall. If they kind of run into that wall, they will be uh, be able to chase them down. So they do want to be defensive there. But now I would expect them to come up, try and get Caitlyn onto this tower to poke some. Irelia and Gangplank trying to zone her out, but you see she is going to poke that down. Doing a good job. Get some damage out, but then back out when the wall comes out. And uh, Alistar taking all, almost all of his health before he's able to use the ultimate. So he's not going to be involved in this fight. I really engaging on top of Mordekaiser. Uh, Alistar goes down. Karthus goes down. Mordekaiser, uh, I believe, is dead. No, there's Mordekaiser. But Vladimir is very low. There's Vladimir. He was able to survive. Caitlyn did go down. No, Caitlyn's low. Uh, uh, survived too. Wow. I I keep on losing track of these uh, of uh, PG's teammates, and the, they were all down to like 100 HP, and they just barely survived. So. Really unfortunate for Net, uh, Fnatic that they had a really good engage. They knew that Alistar's ult was down, and he was a little bit too low to kind of fight. But, you know, PG is really... They, they are so far ahead in this game that even with not the best fights in their favor, they are able to win these fights just because of what such a commanding lead that they took earlier in the game, and because they have these great snowball champions in Mordekaiser and Vladimir, and the great range damage in Caitlyn. Uh, you know, a lot of people believe Caitlyn is arguably the best DPS in the game. She really has fantastic damage output, and then she has the benefit of being the easiest champion to poke down turrets, as you saw, uh, poking down some damage. They weren't able to fully poke down the turret because of the excellent engage by Fnatic, but you could you could kind of see it exhibited in that situation how she'll kind of con uh, control a fight. So they do have the inhibitor, they do have the three secondary turrets, uh, they have such a commanding lead and now because they have the inhibitor uh, it'll be very difficult for Fnatic to defend from now on. What uh, PG is going to do is once they've all regrouped and gotten their items, got their buffs, they are going to just push down one tower. Uh, they're actually going for Dragon, potentially. They did ping Dragon, which isn't a bad decision. Um, you know, really just further your lead. Uh, they are mostly level 18, but it does give them a little bit of gold, and they actually see that Dragon is down. Fnatic did get the Dragon. But what they want to do is push down one of these towers. They should push down top, because if they push down top, uh, let's see if they kept control of where the Dragon was. 3744, so... Baron actually spawning just now. I'm a little surprised they aren't grouped up. It should spawn any second now. Um, oh, it was Dragon at 3744. One's Baron. That's a little surprising to keep track of the Dragon timer, but not the Baron timer. Um, but anyway, they should push down Top Tower because they can just sit right outside this base and mid will push naturally because of the inhibitor. They need some wards in this uh, left jungle. And with the ward coverage and pushing up to uh, the top tower and the creeps pushing mid, they will have very easy control over Baron. And what they can then do, uh, Amumu is actually split pushing bottom, but he doesn't know where the enemy is. He does need to back up here. You really don't want to let the enemy get a good engage on you. Gangplank's coming down. He is okay. 
I'm a little surprised that he's being that aggressive when they don't have vision in this jungle. Um, you know, split pushing's a fantastic uh, strategic element. It's something that really can help you win games a lot. It you know pulls the enemy around, uh, really affects their base. But when you're ahead at this point, you want to really be more strategic um, and a little more careful. And because they didn't have the ward coverage, it did give them uh, Fnatic an opportunity to potentially get a kill on Duomumu. And you really don't want to let that happen. Any 4v5 situation stalls the game out. Uh, but they are going to come up and push down top, hopefully. Uh, Alstar will put a ward in the blue, so that's good. They are going to push down top and then likely go for a fast Baron. They do see Baron here. Vla they should really try and get as much quick damage as they can. See if they can get it before the enemy comes up. But they see Fnatic's coming up here. But fortunately, now they have the ward coverage. And this is where things get exciting. Because you know PG has been so strong so far. And they're going to get the engage they wanted. Because they have these wards here. They should go up and try and bait Baron. They are strong enough that they can take uh, Tank Baron for a short period of time without really taking any damage. Especially with the Force of Nature on Amumu, he will be able to regen any harass uh, you know, or damage from Baron. Irelia is kind of trying to bait them onto her. Irelia does have uh, Magic Resist now, which is primarily their damage output. Uh, so definitely a good call there. I'm surprised that Karthus hasn't sold this Magize, but he has the Rabidons and the Void Staff. So really high damage output. Um, they do need to watch out if they go for Baron that Karthus isn't going to ultimate and just take them all down uh, very quickly. And with these AoEs, they will be kind of pigeonholed. They don't necessarily want to fight in this jungle. Amumu bandage tossing in to the enemy team. The damage goes off on Irelia, which is exactly what they want. She has Force of Nature. She has uh, her ultimate for the heal. She will heal that up very quickly. As we continue to look, Gangplank and uh, Kogma both have Quicksilver Sashes. They really don't want to give a ghost to Mordekaiser. And unfortunately, uh, PG has stalled for a little bit too long. This inhibitor is going to respawn now. Uh, so they they are going to kill Baron very quickly, though. You see, they are able to pick up Baron just before Fnatic came. Fnatic was a little bit too spread out. So they have the Baron. They aren't able to get any kills. So a free Baron for PG. Excellent job. The Bandage Toss misses, but that's okay. You you don't always bandage toss with the intent of getting a kill. A lot of times you bandage toss to see, well, if the enemy moves here, if they're in a bad position, then I'll get them and they'll die. And, uh, you know, th they have the Baron now. They are going to push in the enemy base, take this inhibitor back very easily. They will be able to trans uh, transfer to either top or bottom. I would expect them to go top because of the creeps pushed in. But you actually see they are just going to uh, clear the minion waves let top naturally push and kind of hold Fnatic down bottom. Uh, now they are transferring top, and Fnatic, they don't really have a lot of options here. They need to get a strong engage, but they don't really uh, have enough damage. Sona throws the ultimate. Alistar with his cleanse, he jumps into the enemy team. They pick up Sona and Kog'Maw instantly. Karthus and Gangplank going down. Gangplank throws off the cleanse, but he's basically worthless at this point. Uh, Everyone going down, Karthus is able to pick up the Amumu kill with his ultimate, but this is game over. There's only Irelia to defend, and she definitely cannot take any of these champions. She, you know, if she's lucky, she can get in uh, on Caitlyn. You see um, Gangplank here, uh, he does have a lot of damage, but there's not really anything he can do. Excellent play by PG, they were able to pick up the win over Fnatic, you know, and it, it really all started with early game aggression. And a lot of people think that, you know, you get wards so that you can't get ganked. You, you get wards so that the enemy team can't sneak up on you and get those kills. Well, the fact of the matter is that one of the main benefits of wards is that you have the vision to be aggressive, to go out and win yourself the game. They, uh, PG definitely saw those opportunities, and rather than sitting back and just, you know, all right, deciding, oh, well, they're fanatic. Let's let's kind of play scared and oh, they if we if we do anything wrong, they're going to beat us. Rather than sitting back in lane with that kind of mentality, they went out and they forced the game into situations where they could win. Amumu doing an excellent job of controlling the jungle, ward coverage across the entire map. They were able to get an early advantage and that early advantage snowballed to a late win.